Oh, old middle school? Okay. So what are you what are you guys out here for? Canoeing? Okay. We are with the county weed department. What we're out here to do is spray the noxious weeds in there. They'll grow so much and so thick that they will choke out everything else around it. Okay. There's one in particular that we're looking for around here called purple loose strife. So it's an invasive. Yep. Yep. That's what a a weed is something kind of like out of place. You know what I mean? Like in your garden and stuff, you don't want them there. Definition of noxious is it's invasive or competitive. Why don't you try to pick this up? Pretty heavy, huh? There's only yeah. four gallons in there. Yeah. Just a couple quick safety rules. You're very familiar with them by now. With no standing in the canoes. No training places with your partner. No splashing. The most important rule, be nice to your canoe partner. Right? This is a typical spring day with the Mount Logan Discovery Field Program. We take six to eight students out of the classroom at a time uh, for just about an hour and a half or two hours. We're out here on the Little Bear River and uh, while we were driving out here they were just finishing uh, chapter 40 of Maniac McGee the book that the rest of the students are reading in the classroom right now. And all of our writing instruction primarily takes place out here in these small group field experiences. This is about their fourth or fifth time in the canoes this year, so at this point we don't have to spend any time teaching them how to load and unload the canoes. The Little Bear River continues on up this way, and that's where we're gonna go ahead and paddle. This behind us is the Logan River. Present, can you see Logan Canyon straight out there? Yeah, yeah we did. And Mount water Logan. Sites. This water is coming from up by Beaver Mountain Ski Resort, um, Tony Grove. So, what do you call it where two rivers come together? Does anyone know what that's called? A fork. A fork is the name of, like, if a one smaller tributary of a river would be oh. a fork. Okay. It's called a confluence. So, everyone go like this say confluence. Bring your hands together. A confluence. It's where two rivers become one. We have the Logan and the Little Bear join here, and they continue on. Do you know what river the Little Bear joins? The Big Bear? The Big Bear, or just the Bear River, yep. There, if you paddle to the north, you come to the confluence of the Little Bear and the Bear River. But, so this water comes from the mountains to Porcupine Dam, and then from there it goes to Hiram Dam. So when we're out on these field programs, there's always an academic component. You saw at the start of the video, um, there was a weed crew that had been out here in a duck boat spraying uh, invasive species. And that gives us connections back into um, our classroom academics. Um, earlier in the year, these students were involved in a program with the Forest Service to introduce a um, biocontrol species called the stem bore weevil up at Hardware Ranch. When they talked to these guys about um, spraying weeds and invasive species, they've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on from those experiences earlier in the year. The other key to these field programs is the small groups, because even our travel time can be used for instructional purposes, whereas a bus with 90 kids on it becomes crowd management. Um, so we've been able to figure out a way to be able to team teach and one of us stays back with the majority of the students and the other one comes out and we're able to build meaningful relationships with the students where the learning is real and it's alive out here it's not contrived um, it's not artificial it's not secondhand we're out here having these first-hand experiences where the writing uh, becomes very authentic is that, is that what the wood things are for? No. Wood well, these are called a thwart, and they serve two purposes. One is they give the canoe strength here. And then can you see this, how it curves in? They call this the yoke. Yeah. And you can actually put that, one person can put it on their shoulders and carry the canoe, because this is the oh, center balance point of the boat. Oh, that's why I see. I thought it was for someone to sit and hold on. 
Do we need a full blank page? Yeah, full blank page. I'd like to build a word list along here first, and we're going to work on some phrases. To, and title this Little Bear River. Your journals are always a safe zone. And by that I mean we're not ever going to grade your journals for spelling or punctuation. What I don't like is when I see kids, they think of a really good word. Have you ever done this? And you start to write it down and you can't spell it, so you choose a different word. So instead of saying like placid for calm, you say um, still. And still is a good word, but it's not as powerful as placid. Out in the field, we just want to get the magic down. And back in the classroom on the computers, that's when we're going to worry about things like spelling, punctuation. Obviously do the best you can on those things, but don't let that get in the way of good writing. Just, if you just take a minute and look around, what are things that come to mind describing what we're doing out here? Like what's a word you think would be important to have? Cacophony. Cacophony? <laughs> okay, why did you choose that word? Cacophony. Because of the birds. Because of the birds. Was that a word of the day that you had in the classroom? Yeah. Cacophony? And what does that mean? Like a group of loud noises. A group of loud noises. Okay, so we have a cacophony of sounds coming from the cattails over there. Right? What are we doing today? We should probably have that word down. What are we in? Canoe. A wetland. Okay, we're in a wetland. We're also in the canoe. Do you know how to spell canoe? Yeah. C-A-N-O-E. O and E are both vowels, so if you drop the E, you have to drop the O, and then we're canning instead of canoeing, and we're not canning, right? It's raining gently, can you see that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You want to put that phrase down? Gentle rain, or... How would you describe those ripples that you see? Any ideas of the raindrops? Mm -hmm. And what shape are they? Circular. Oh. Circular yeah. ripples, or yeah. rippling rings, right? I'm going to do what I've told you not to do, and that's stand up in the canoe right now. <laughs> and the reason for that is when they're all tied together like this, I can't tip us over. Really? Get these guys. You see the paddle boarders out there? What does it look like they're doing? Floating. Floating? Look like they're walking on the water. Okay. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? We're good. Good. We've got the floating classroom out here today. <laughs> nice day to be out. Yeah, it is. You guys have fun. A good dog. You guys having a good time? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, uh, silently gliding. Silently gliding. Do you like that phrase? What do you call these bushes over here? Do we know the name of them? Oh, duckweed. Is it? Duckweed are the little green things that you see floating. Just the little green dots. That's duckweed. What good writers do is they show instead of tell. So the more detail you can give, I kind of think of good writing as taking pictures. And you want to zoom in and give your readers things that they can picture. So if you look over here at these little bushes, instead of saying the bushes, there was a cacophony of noise from the bushes, a good writer would say, well, what kind of plants are those over there? Those are corn dog bushes, right? It's the it's a really big word that we can never know. Cattails, yeah. Cattails. Oh. <laughs> and behind me, do you see those leafy bushes over there? Mm -hmm. Those are called dogwoods. So write down cattails and dogwoods. Okay, what other things come to mind? Green. Green. Okay, can we attach a word with the green? How would you describe oh, the mountains. this green? We'll get back to that in just a minute. How would you describe this green here? Grass green. Grass green. Look over here. Is that a spring bright green. spring green? Why don't you guys write spring green down? I like that. Spring green. You have a different adjective you want to put with it? The adjectives are the words that describe the nouns, right? You said mountains. Now, again, a good writer, instead of just saying mountains, would say, well, what are these mountains called? The Wellsville. And when you look at the Wellsville's right here, what do you notice about it? Like, what stands out? Snow. The snow. And what's happening right now? Raining. So how would you describe this rain? Drizzling. Sprinkling. Okay, drizzling, sprinkling. Let me ask you this question.
How do you feel out here? Relaxed. When it's quiet, how do you feel? Calm. 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 So you could write down relaxed, calm. Are the sprinkles kind of calming? Mm -hmm. You hear the thunder? There's summer clouds. It's way off in the distance or we wouldn't be out here. These birds right here coming at us, can you see them? See the shape they're flying in? There's the V, yep. And those are called ibis, I-B-I-S. They've got a long curved beak that lets them dig in the mud for bugs. As opposed to like a hawk that has a short, sharp beak. They're making guts and killing them, right? Because they're predators. What other sounds do you hear out here? Tweets? Chirps? Have you read that? The down? rain. Soft rain falling? What does it sound like? That bird right there, do you see it? Mm-hmm. Squawk. What did it look like? Red. No. It was black and? Red. Red? Where was the red? It was by its oh. neck. By its neck. It's called? Red. Red wing? It's right on its wing. Yep, a red-winged black blackbird. Bird. Okay, what I'd like you to do now, circle maybe seven or eight of your favorite ones, and then what I'd like you to do is take those and write a description of today, what we've done. You don't have to use those words. Specifically, if you think of others, you'd rather substitute them for. But remember the idea here, good writers show instead of tell. So if you wrote, we went canoeing, it was fun. Does anyone really have much to picture? Mm -hmm. okay. How could you show fun? Would laughter or smiling show that you were having fun? Do you see the difference? We smiled as we paddled across up the Little Bear River. Instead of saying it's beautiful, show me what was beautiful. Then those are the things we've talked about. If you're stumped, if you're not sure what to write, look at your word list and just start building from there. There's a new bird. You see that one over there? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. Yellow -headed. A yellow-headed blackbird, yep. As we were silently gliding in our canoes across the wetland, I heard a cacophony of sounds from different birds flying over our heads. We pass by cattails and dogwood. It blows gently around us. There is a distant thunder, but the sun is shining bright. We got into the canoes surrounded by the spring greenness of the world the sunlight shining down on us. The invisible rain sprinkled polka dots all around us as it hit the water. As the canoes gently flow on the water, the gentle snow glistens in the sun. The cattails swiftly shake as the calm water slowly flows. Along the Little Bear River in our floating classroom canoes, we felt the drizzling rain fall overhead and saw the Wellsville Mountains that surrounded us. The mountains had snow at the peaks, but the wetness faded down into spring green grass. Ibis birds and red-winged blackbirds flew over the water. So this whole field experience, these students were gone from the classroom for a total of uh, not even two hours, about an hour and 45 minutes. Um, just a quick out and back. It's not a bad day at work. So at the end of uh, Every field experience, we give out one of these reminder bands. They say, Rider of the Day, Mount Logan Discovery. Now we're going to go. Whoa! That was cool. There has to be an element of joy to the learning process and in our schools. And if there isn't, I think we seriously need to question what we're doing to this generation of kids. Ha <laughs> ha